During my day job, I work with a lot of developers that are new to Blazor. Whether they're coming from ASP.NET MVC, or whether they're coming from a different framework, or whether they're just new to software engineering in the first place, I tend to see the same mistakes getting made over and over again. So in this video, I'm going to discuss five common mistakes that developers that are new to Blazor continuously make. First up is relying on JavaScript. Most developers will come from some other language or framework where they are used to using JavaScript to deal with all the client-side interactions. Developers will frequently carry over that mentality straight into Blazor and use JavaScript interoperability for every given situation. Doing this defeats the whole purpose of using Blazor in the first place. We want to be able to write C-sharp code instead of JavaScript. So the next time you find yourself wanting to write JavaScript in a Blazor application, stop and think to yourself, can you get the same effect by using c -sharp and Blazor's built-in functionality. Number two is underestimating Blazor's rendering model. Developers new to Blazor will often assume that Blazor's rendering model works similar to MVC. Often they don't know about Blazor's component lifecycle events, rendering options, and how data binding works. Blazor components have lifecycle events on initialized, on parameter set, on after render. Not using each of these events in the correct way can end up with unexpected behavior in a Blazor application. Using these incorrectly will cause re-renders and performance spikes in your application. I have a whole video on this topic, I'll link it below. Understanding the life cycle, make sure you are optimizing performance because you're performing tasks at the right time during your application. Along with this is calling the state has changed method. For some reason, new developers feel the need to call state has changed to force the component to re-render at will. If you have a user interacting with your user interface, Blazor itself will re-render a component. There's no need for you to call state has changed. Only time you need to do that is if you need to trigger the UI change based on something that isn't happening on the UI. For example, if you are receiving a message from a, a secondary service that has no interaction with the UI from the user's point of view. Number three is treating Blazor components as if they were MVC views. Developers will often try to apply the same principles that they use for MVC views that they do to Blazor components. You might be seeing Blazor components as a simple view template as opposed to treating a component like a reusable and generic thing. This weakens how your code is structured. You're losing all those awesome benefits that Blazor provides. Uh, state management, components, encapsulation, and just reusability. So make sure you're aware the components are not just views, but rather self-contained units with their own state, their own functionality, and can be reused in a modular fashion. Number four is overlooking Blazor's built-in asynchronous programming model. Blazor relies heavily on asynchronous programming for both its UI rendering and for fetching data. Developers accustomed to the synchronous MVC style patterns often struggle with the async await patterns in Blazor. Ignoring asynchronous programming can lead to blocking calls, poor performance, a poor user experience, and this is especially true in Blazor WebAssembly. So make sure you understand task, async, await, and you should be using the asynchronous versions of the lifecycle event methods. Number five is ignoring state management best practices. A lot of other frameworks deal with state management on the server side and then have each request to the server being stateless. Developers new to Blazor will often struggle with how to persist data between components or persist data across sessions. They'll often lose state across navigation and page refreshes. Make sure you understand the different scopes of your dependency injected services. So singleton, scoped and transient. And then for passing state between components, use cascading parameters to pass your values down to the child components and use event callbacks to pass them up back to their parent components. So are you new to Blazor? Leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear about what it is about Blazor you are struggling with, what you find difficult and what you find hard working with. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.